Now, now that Regan's here, we can start. Oh, yeah, of course. Regan's the uh, manager of digital channels at the council. Is beer and chili going to be able to be covered by all this? Um, I just had yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just bring the chili in with it. Um, a lot of councils are either one end where they're really slapdash and don't have many, very many processes, and some. Uh, over the other end, where everything is a process, and you have to follow it all to the to the letter. And guess which end we're at? The slakers. <laughs> we look like we're the slakers, but we're not. We actually have uh, yes, lots of processes and stuff. Anyway, uh, this is Mike's bit. He was supposed to present this, so. Um, but I already know all the stuff because he got it off. He got the information, a lot of the information off there in the first place. Um, yep. So as you know, we're a CWP instance, CWP, much larger version of uh, much larger sort of um, instance of um, software. So in our in our site, there's three thousand plus pages. So it's getting pretty big. Um, the newsline module that we developed, which is the uh, what the communications team use, that's uh, got 500 plus articles in it. I actually think it's closer to a thousand. Yeah. One of the, the two big things we've got coming up, um, we're replacing B there with the events module in the site, so it's all going to be all incorporated into the CCC site. Uh, consultations is the next big cab off the rank. Uh, rank, it's um, yeah, that's a fair fair amount of work and uh, very very tight deadlines. So uh, the idea being that we're going to remake this horrible old oh, Mike. I started for you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the boss is here as well, so he's already seen me starting. For you. You made a <laughs> um, Yeah, so the consultation is replacing a horrible old .NET app that uh, is iframed into our site at the moment. Um, and then we've been onto the Botanic Gardens because they've been onto us for quite some time about having their own separate site. Guess what 96% of our site is made up of? Thieves. <laughs> That's no fun. <laughs> People should be surprised. <laughs> It's actually the assets area, so it's and there's images as well, um, but it's not as much as what we we typically have available um, externally as it is. So we've still got part of our old uh, site up that has close to fifty thousand um, PDFs. So uh, actually, 40, no, that is correct, forty-five thousand. We did get rid of quite a few of it. Um, we have been used much. Now uh, we did some stats on the um, PDFs as well and um, so 96% of our site, probably 0.9% of the traffic. So we have between 25 to 30,000 page views per day according to Google Analytics. Uh, during the November earthquake, that was up to about 70,000. And I think that all of that was within about four hours. <coughs> we averaged 20 to 30 gigabytes per day of network traffic. Uh, we get an average of that, so um, it's quite a lot. It uh, meant that we had to be bumped up to the premium uh, web application firewall. Mobile views are nearly the same as desktop views. During that November earthquake, the Kaikoura earthquake, it was um, considerably more. Oh, yeah. And we have about 500 plus users, including admin users. So about a sixth of the staff that the council have got access to CMS. We approve everything, by the way. So when we 
developing and, and testing. Uh, here are some of our considerations. Uh, security is usually one is the uh, is usually the top one. Uh, being CWP, a lot of that security is already incorporated, but we've got to make sure that we're not doing anything that they don't like. We soon discover it if we don't if they don't like it because they won't allow us to push it up. Performance has been a big one for us, particularly with the November earthquake. We had um, we had to make some really do some uh, performance changes very very quickly, and um, I'm quite very pleased to say that the performance is much much better now, far better, and uh, I can see it on the. Uh, See it on the charts and can we get it through a capsule, which is the web application file that we use and with CWP. Uh, accessibility, of course, being a city council, the easiest way to get offside with your uh, ratepayers is uh, for a certain, to shut out a certain area of your customers, particularly if they're dis disabled, and um, that gets through to the press. Of course, our functionality, we've got to make sure that it's all, again, being the council, we've got to make sure that these things actually work properly. And we've got to we stick to the standards as well. So the web standards that are come down through the uh, New Zealand government web standards, we, uh, we adhere to those quite strictly. So, our releases, in a nutshell, so I'll go, into, I'll go into these in a wee bit more detail, but uh, we keep our, we're an agile um, team, so we keep our stories within Team Foundation Server, which is a Microsoft product. Um, I'll refer to it as TFS from now on, so if you hear me talk about TFS, that's what, I, what we're talking about. Uh, we have a very strict change management process um, from the days when we were very, very strictly idle. Um, that's the thing that's hung over from, uh, from those days. Code is kept in GitLab, the uh, CWP uh, code repository. We do the testing within TFS, it has some automated tools in it. Uh, we're not fully automated, of course, but um, we do have um, enough automation to make the job much easier for the tester. And um, we deploy every Tuesday using the deploy naught tool. And um, I think I'm in the minority actually from what other people I've heard, but I, I really like the deploy naught tool. Has anybody else used it before? No, it's, um, no, it's, it's really nice. It just does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so. Now change management, this is where I usually have, um, have to wade in. Uh, I, I sort of act as the release manager as well within, uh, within the team for the CWP side. Um, and the first one is pretty much right. It's, um, if you try to do an unauthorized change and the change manager finds out, yes, you soon find out, you soon find out that she's found out. And then it goes up the tree as well. So Regan gets to hear about it as well. Uh, what we do is we use a standard change for each deployment. A standard change in ITIL is a pre-approved change that is uh, re repeatable. So in our case, we repeat the process every Tuesday. It's almost it's identical each time. So prize the candidate for a, a standard change. Um, standard changes are also much, much easier to manage too, so you don't have to worry about a step of the process in the, in the change process going to the practice managers for their approval. And if they say no, then you're back to, you're back to testing to task. Uh, I like to keep the commit number that we use as the build in the build task, and the reason for that is that while we can go back through and easily look through our list in GitLab or in deployment as to what we've deployed, 
it really does help to be able to go and find it here because then you know your actual commit number that you've used. We link the test tasks through to TFS so that again we can just, if we have a problem a couple of weeks down the track we can go back to the task, link to it, make sure it's all good or, or if that, see if that was, if something was missed. CMDB update is, uh, we try to do a CMDB at the council with all of the various tools we've got and the servers, the services we use. Um, it's a mammoth task, that one. Uh, and not everything's in there at this stage. And deploy, ta uh, deploy task is when we're all set to go. So, invariably, um, once you've deployed and you're ready to close, you have to stand and change. Um, our normal changes will, the way they tend to work is that by the time you've got through to your deploy task, you've probably already deployed. So it's just a, one of those funny things about change management. Um, now TFS is, uh, we run our, um, all of our agile processes through there. So our stand-ups are done with the TFS screen. So uh, people, the idea is people are supposed to talk to the board. We all tend to look at each other rather than that, but uh, the idea is we talk to the board. Uh, we use two X sprints. Um, we've tried three week, we tried one week. And in the end it seems two X is seems to be working quite well for us at the moment. Uh, for each sprint we agree on what goes in. Um, we end up with very, very long sprints. Very, you know, a lot of stories per sprint. And um, yeah, so we've got to sort of prioritise. Okay, these all look important, but what are the actual important ones? Push them to the top. We try this one, it's, we haven't had a lot of success with it, but just making sure we use, uh, use the tagging feature in TFS just to tag the deploy date and the change request number. Um, yeah, perhaps next week we'll try that one again, get it going again. When the testing is done, uh, the tester will raise some bugs. Uh, they then go through to the developers, they then check them out. Um, squash them or uh, to put them back. Uh, we do have quite a few stories and tasks that can carry out because we end up with lots of quite a, a number of tasks in our sprints. Um, so we do carry those over. Uh, but we, before we deploy, we'll usually try to cut off at 3 o'clock the previous day so that we know that this is what's going in and the tester can then go through and test. If they found, found anything that needs any updates, then we can got plenty of time to be able to do it. Can I just say something, Kip? Go on, yeah. Um, on the, like, the two sprints, there's um, multiple developers working on a whole range of different stories. So, uh, like for example, I'm working on consultations, um, another developer working on events, uh, some might be working on styling templates, so there's, it's not just one particular area, we're working on a whole range of um, different components in the Silverstripe CWP, so... Mm. Okay. Any testers here? Anyone like testing? <laughs> oh good, on the most yeah. worst, worst job I ever done in IT was testing. I think um, we had to fill in for one of our testers uh, for a couple of weeks um, when he was on paternity leave and boy did everybody hear about it. Uh, so the testing is, uh, we generally use the UAT system uh, for that, despite the fact we do have actually, we do actually have an uh, internal test uh, set up for uh, CWP. Um, we've got that going in Windows 2012 and IAS. So, um, not a standard setup for Zillow Stripe. 
Um, I mentioned it's semi-automated. Uh, there is a drive to make it a bit more fully automated. Uh, I don't think we're going to be allowed to do that in CWP. I don't think they'll allow us to put the code into CWP to allow that to happen. Um, of course, we have sign-off for the tester. He's got to be quite happy with it, with everything that's uh, gone on. Uh, we can make the call to say, pull some of the stuff out if we're required. And um, we have multiple people who can sort of say yay or nay, and we actually go ahead or not. So um, usually at three o'clock, if we're still talking about this on the day before the uh, the day of the deployment, I'm usually fairly grumpy. So usually just say, well, come on, are we going to do this or not? If you're not, then we're, if you're still dithering, then we're not going to do it. I might just say something like that as well, the test, um, the testing there, Kevin. Um, like, it is funny to joke about testing, right? It, it, it's sort of thing that, in a sense, nobody should really like testing, but what everybody should really like is quality. And that's what you get out of a robust test process. Um, that stuff that Kevin was talking about before, our accessibility, the functionality that we have um, as a council, the only reason that we ever get that to any sort of level of quality is because of our robust testing. So it's. Um, it's a damn important thing that we do to make sure what we deliver is the right stuff. Yeah, Regan's absolutely right. Nobody should ever like testing. Um, deploy, we're um, deploy on Tuesday, uh, Tuesdays at 10 p.m. because there's an outage. Uh, when we have a look at our, our site in Google Analytics, we will see anything from 70 to a, well over 100 users, you know, active users, during the during the day. So the last thing we want to do is go and throw off that many people when we deploy. Uh, 10 p.m. is pretty quiet, so uh, we're not going to upset too many people. And just in case we do, we let the call centre know that we're actually doing this so they can feel any calls that um, come that way. And while we're talking about Thursday backup window, that's, we're deploying tonight just to deploy some map fixes that are, that are going up. <clears throat> um, yep, notify everybody, deploy, think deploy not. Uh, I, I had said this before that we, with CWP it must go into the UAT system before it goes to production. It's, you can't go straight to production without, without UAT first. Um, when you deploy a deploy node for production, it's, uh, it requires authorization, so that's what Mike gets, a certain far, gets so far into the, the deploy for production, and then he needs somebody else to actually pull the trigger. I'm not qualified enough to click the button to deploy. You don't even get the button. <laughs> um, now, one of the nice things about deploy node is that um, Mighty goes through go and give a, go and give a uh, quick little smoke test. The, the, the actual tool does a, a, a check for a, a 200 response straight away. So if it doesn't get that, it will go back automatically. Um, if you're going through the site for your quick smoke test and your, as you see performance issues or something just doesn't look quite right, you can just go uh, initiate an instant rollback. So it's um, just one part of the step of the deployment. And um, for really good fun, if you really want to go and see what you did six months ago, you can go back and rock back to a previous release from um, time gone by. Uh, 